Tony proceeded to tell me that when the president got in the beast, he was under the impression from Mr. Meadows that the off-the-record movement to the Capitol was still possible and likely to happen, but that Bobby had more information. So once the president had gotten into the vehicle with Bobby, he thought that they were going up to the Capitol, and when Bobby had relayed to him, we're not, we don't have the assets to do it, it's not secure, we're going back to the West Wing. The president had very strong, a very angry response to that. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president, take me up to the Capitol now. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Angle. And Mr. when Mr. Renato had recounted this story to me, he had motioned towards his clavicles. Hmm. The strangle heard around the world yesterday as Cassie Hutchins relayed an alleged incident that happened with Donald Trump in the Beast, which is the presidential car that he was leaving his January 6th rally from, and was upset that he couldn't go to the Capitol. Take me to the Capitol. I'm the effing president. And apparently, uh, a, a, an attempted strangle took place there. Now, uh, uh, Liz Cheney, who was also uh, leading the proceedings yesterday, she also asked Hudson to confirm this story with the people involved. And um, they didn't really disagree that this happened. Let's watch more. And was Mr. Engel in the room as Mr. Ornato told you this story? He was. Did Mr. Engel correct or disagree with any part of the story for Mr. Ornato? Mr. Engel did not correct or disagree with any part of the story. Did Mr. Engel or Mr. Ornato ever after that tell you that what Mr. Ornato had just said was untrue? N neither Mr. Ornato nor Mr. Engel told me ever that it was untrue. So update since yesterday because there's been a few tweets and a few pushbacks from this story. So I want to really fast because Peter Alexander over on Twitter, I think NBC correspondent Peter Alexander, I don't think he's moved on from there yet. Yeah, chief White House correspondent for NBC News. He did tweet out that a source close to the Secret Service says both men, both of those Secret Service agents that were in the truck, dispute that Trump grabbed the steering wheel or assaulted an agent. They do not deny that Trump was irate and demanded that they drive to the Capitol. There's more updates on top of that because Justin Barragona tweeted out, since the, since the sources are now saying these agents will largely confirm the thrust of Hutchinson's testimony about Trump's anger over not being taken to the Capitol. He says, this feels like it's gonna all come down to semantics, like what the definition of a lunge is. Was it a lunge or was it a lean? Was it a, was it a, was it a strangle or was it a clavicle grab? Was it a steering wheel or was it the uh, the shifter? I mean, these types of things could potentially be the differences among this, but are definitely gonna try and shoot some holes into this. But continuing on because uh, the armored SUV was actually another part about this the, the testimony that happened yesterday and showed as this event was happening as they took off. Let's watch more. And that is possibly when the situation began there. Now, Trump's legal team, they didn't really want him near the Capitol. Let's give more details about the reasons why they were doing this. Because this, some people are frustrated by the salacious nature of some of the details. But there's reasons behind all this, and I want to get into that with you, Farron, but really fast. So White House lawyers were strongly opposed to Trump doing this, going down to the Capitol, fearing that it could lead to charges of inciting a riot or interfering with the Electoral College certification process. Pat Cipollone, who at the time was White House counsel, warned staff, quote, we're gonna get charged with every crime imaginable if Trump went to the Capitol, is what Hutchinson also testified. So uh, Farron, again, the salacious nature of people thinking about, oh my God, the former president tried to strangle and grab one of his secret survey agents. I get that, you're right, and that's crazy, but there's a lot more behind this. Uh, there, there really is, and you know, I just want to back up for a second because mm -hmm. you, you pointed out something that that I mentioned uh, in a video that I recorded shortly after the hearings, and that was the word lunge talking about the Secret Service response. And I, I pointed out that it's very interesting that they chose to use that word and that that word has been repeated multiple times. Because yeah, as you said, 
there's a world of difference. And they can technically not be lying if they say, no, listen, he never lunged for the steering wheel. He aggressively grabbed for it. That's what we meant when we said he never lunged. It creates this gray area where it does all come down to which words do we want to use? Was it a strangulation? Were his hands on his clavicle or were they around his throat? No, he never strangled him, but you could have your hand here forcibly you know, restraining an individual without strangling them. So yes, I think it is all going to come down to semantics and I think it's all going to come out in the wash here. And you even have, by the way, Carol Linig, who has written a book, by the way, about the Secret Service and has also written a book about the Trump administration. She said that based on the reports that she has seen, you actually had members of the Secret Service that were supporting the insurrection, supporting the rioters on their social media accounts. Going out there and agreeing and and supporting with uh, you know what was happening that day. So the Secret Service right now is you know not looking so great. And I think as this continues, you could really end up with some agents having to come in there and testify you know under oath and basically explain what happened where they can't you know where they're at right now. I will say they're not under oath. Hutchinson was. So obviously we gotta put a little more weight on what she said because she's under penalty of perjury. They can come out in the press right now and say whatever the heck they want without any fear of being prosecuted for saying that. Once they get under oath though, it's a completely different story and that's where we're gonna see that word game come into play there. So that's what I think is happening with that. With the Cipollini stuff like oh, we're gonna get charged with every crime imaginable. Yeah, even if you didn't go. You're probably right now looking at being charged with a lot of crimes, like as many as you could imagine, because this evidence at this point is just absolutely overwhelming to the point where I still gotta wonder what the heck is Merrick Garland doing? I feel like he should be in the audience during these hearings instead of watching it on TV. Now, I wanna make sure we also realize that, again, there was a serious nature to this. They were talking about how they're gonna get charged with every crime imaginable if we do this. They're looking to protect. Donald Trump from himself. Because on top of that, what are you gonna do when you get down to the Capitol? I really do think, first off, let's go to this tweet from Hassan, uh, Hassan the Hun, uh, who tweeted out a, a joking image of what uh, President Trump figured would happen. As you see, MAGA red hat there with his polo on trying to help more, more insurrections climb the wall. This was the picture in his head according to Hassan. But you know what, as I saw that happen, everyone was talking about, man, this salacious stuff. You guys keep talking about choking. But you know what, he wanted to go down to the Capitol because he thought his little army was gonna take over. And this is a ridiculous assessment. This is my assumption, this is just my, my theory. He thought it was gonna be a victorious day for him. He's gonna intimidate, take over, overturn the election forcefully since he couldn't do it with his stupid Green Bay sweep. And he was gonna stand on top of the level of rubble that he imagined at the Capitol and declare this his. Like he thought he was about to take over, this is his day. And he was upset that the exciting thing was not actually gonna happen. So lastly, because he did push back on this whole thing through Truth Social, he did multiple times throughout the day. Let's go to his last truth, which is a lie. Donald Trump says, her fake story that I tried to grab the steering wheel at the White House limousine in order to steer to the Capitol building is sick and fraudulent. Very much like the unselect committee itself. Wouldn't even have been possible to do such a ridiculous thing. Her story of me throwing food is also false. And why would she have to clean it up? I hardly knew who she was. 